Don't use ChatGPT. Especially don't use ChatGPT for writing. Even if you're writing fiction, nonfiction, no matter what type of writing you're doing, ChatGPT is not very good at it. While ChatGPT is the most well known of all of the different AI writing tools out there, as evidenced by the fact that OpenAI is the one getting sued left and right, while the rest of the AI models out there just kind of go on unopposed. But when it comes to actual writing, ChatGPT is not very good and there are way better alternatives out there. Let me explain to you why this is and what those alternatives are for you. First, let me just start off by saying I love ChatGPT. This channel would not exist if it weren't for ChatGPT. It's what got everything started along the way. And there's a very good chance that future models coming from OpenAI might actually be very good and I might totally change my mind about this video. And it has some redeemable qualities. For one, it's very good at following directions. If I ask it to write a scene and I give it specific things to write in that scene, it will write those things. It's also really good for summarization and for a number of other just simple tasks that I might need a AI tool to use. But ultimately, ChatGPT has a number of glaring issues. The first and probably most egregious issue with ChatGPT GPT is that the writing just isn't very good. Even if you give it a solid style prompt where you're telling it not to do this or to do that or to write in this person's style, the output that it gives you is usually not changed very much and not all that improved. And any skilled writer, and trust me, I have been writing for years now and I have 14 books to my name, plus a, a lot of other like short stories and other novellas and things, I can immediately identify GPT written text. And any skilled writer, especially one with experience working with AI, will be able to spot the overly flowery purple kind of prose that ChatGPT spits out. It tends to be very over the top, very melodramatic, and just overall not great. And I'll show you an example. Right here, we I gave it a prompt to write the opening scene of an urban fantasy novel where a female police officer named Katrina parks at the station early in the morning and takes a deep breath, getting herself mentally prepared for the day when she has to go to a station and get her assignments for the day. Knowing that they are likely to be boring as ever, write in first person and be sure to show don't tell. Kind of a standard story beat that I would want to do. Obviously, we could add more style information to this to maybe get some marginal improvement, but I have found with the GPT models found in ChatGPT that there isn't really much that that sort of prompting does to change anything. It really doesn't sound that different. And uh, here's what it gave me. The first light of dawn hadn't yet broken the grip of the night's shadow as I pulled into the familiar yet ever so slightly foreboding parking lot of the precinct. Can you see how this is over the top and melodramatic? It's using a lot of adjectives. It's using words like first light of dawn, the grip of the night's shadows, uh, foreboding. This is not the sort of thing you would find in a typical novel, even in something that was meant to have a really acute sense, tension and foreboding, you would not write it this way. You just wouldn't. It's it's over the top. It's using too much description. The engine's hum died with a twist of my wrist, plunging the world into a silence that felt bo both comforting and eerie. It almost sounds kind of poetic but not in a good way. I sat there for a moment, hands on the wheels, eyes closed, taking a deep, steadying breath. The chill of the early morning air seeped through the car windows, brushing against my skin, a stark contrast to the warmth I was leaving behind. Uh, this kind of prose is typical of AI. No matter what I do to affect the style prompt, it's likely going to remain more or less close to this kind of style. I can make some improvements on it with a good style prompt, but overall it is very difficult to do and, and it's not consistent and it's just not good. Another thing that ChatGPT is not so good at is any kind of creative ideation that you might need it for. Now, don't get me wrong, using ChatGPT for brainstorming ideas and things like that is better than nothing. I've known authors that have just used random word generators to get them unstuck and things like that can work and ChatGPT can help. But I have found that other tools like Claude and Gemini are way better at the sort of creative ideation phase where it's thinking about giving you ideas, helping you get unstuck if you get to a part of a scene, as well as if you're writing nonfiction, 
helping you come up with ideas that you might not have covered in a chapter or in an article that you're writing, other things to add to your outline and things like that. That's the sort of thing that other tools, especially in this particular case, Gemini seems to do really well with this, meaning that ChatGPT just, it tends to give you very generic answers, things that you probably would have come up with on your own, nothing really outstanding or creative or thinking outside of the box. Now, you might also be thinking that there's a lot more that ChatGPT can do in in addition to writing and you're correct for instance you can use dolly 3 to create images inside of ChatGPT, which can be a really good bonus especially if you don't have access to another art generator that's paid like mid-journey but even though dolly 3 was pretty amazing when it was first released it has since been surpassed by a lot of different other image generating tools mid-journey is better and if you don't want to pay for an additional subscription for mid-journey leonardo.ai and ideogram are two amazing services that are just as good if not better as Dolly 3 and they give you a certain number of free generations every day it's actually a really good deal so in my mind there's really no reason to keep ChatGPT around the only reason that I do is because I'm an influencer in this space and I need to be testing with it quite frequently and additionally as I mentioned at the beginning there may be new updates to come around that I want to look into things may change but for now I highly recommend you don't use ChatGPT. So what are some of the best alternatives if we're not gonna be using ChatGPT? Well, I'll run through a couple. First, let's start by talking about the not safe for work test. If you're writing something that's a little bit, you know, getting censored by uh, ChatGPT uh, or any of the others, you might wanna look at some open source models. The best place to play around with these, in my opinion, is to go to Open Router, uh, openrouter.ai, and play around with the different models here. It has a chat interface, very simple similar to ChatGPT. The only difference is that OpenRouter is not a subscription. You pay as you go. Thankfully, all of the open source models are extremely cheap. So it you might only spend a few cents, even if you're like writing a couple, like a whole novel inside of these open source models. The way to access these open source models, if you're in open router, is to come over here. We're in the chat area here, select model and it gives you a list of pretty much every major model that is available uh, to place in here. There's a lot of stuff and it includes OpenAI's models and Claude's models, but the ones you really want to look at are some of these top ones, these open source models. I have found that Mistral Large right here is one of the best ones and is comparable to ChatGPT in quality in terms of the writing, but will also allow you to push it a little bit more so that it's there's not nearly as much censorship. There is a little bit of censorship, but you can actually get some pretty graphic stuff uh, using these models. If you are writing anything that requires a little bit more edgier stuff and ChatGPT just isn't doing it for you or Claude or Gemini there aren't doing it for you, then Mr. Large is the one I I would look at right now but i would experiment with all of them because there are a lot of good open source models i've just found mr large to be pretty reliable overall so you can play around with that here in open router or in a number of other services but open router is i think one of the easiest ones to just play around with things you can even have multiple models and you give it a prompt and it will respond with all the models that you've selected. So you can easily compare and contrast how things react to your prompts and things like that. But my favorite model and my favorite chat service, similar to ChatGPT, especially when it comes to natural sounding, human sounding prose, is Claude 3. Claude 3 can be found at Claude.ai. If you live in a country like Canada, I believe, that doesn't have access to Claude.ai, you can access all of these models inside of Poe.com or in open router, which I just showed you. Uh, but here I've gone ahead and run the same prompt that I just did in ChatGPT. And this is the output that it gave me. I pulled into the nearly empty parking lot of the precinct, the sun barely peeking over the horizon. The steering wheel felt cool beneath my fingers as I gripped it tightly, trying to mentally prepare myself for another day on the job. With a deep breath, I closed my eyes and felt the familiar weight of my badge and gun on my hip. You've got this, Katrina, I muttered to myself, a daily ritual that had become as natural as breathing. Still a little bit of that AI sort of flair to it, but it's significantly less purple than what 
ChatGPT gave us. It's uh, not nearly as flowery, not nearly as over the top, would require ex very, very little editing compared to the ChatGPT text, which would almost need to be completely rewritten entirely. In addition to this, I have found that the Claude 3 models tend to be extremely responsive to your prompts. So remember what I said about ChatGPT not really doing a good job with style prompts. I could add all kinds of style prompts that I wanted and it would only at best just slightly improve the output. With this, if I wanted to add a more extensive style prompt, it would be so much better in its generation. And you can even do things like add a sample chapter of something else that you wrote. And it's actually really, really good at matching your style with the pro's output. Output, which is absolutely amazing. No other set of models at this point in time do it that well than the Claude 3 family of models. This, what you see here, is kind of just the default that Claude gives us, which already by default, it's way better than what ChatGPT does. But with a little bit of extra prompting, using a, another tool perhaps to facilitate that, you can get absolutely incredible work out of the Claude 3 models. Now, as a side note, there's also Gemini and Gemini Advanced, the paid version of Gemini. They're not bad, but in terms of writing, it's not nearly as good as Claude three, maybe slightly better than what ChatGPT can do. And weirdly, Gemini is actually quite good at things like brainstorming and things like that. And so if you want to try Gemini out, you can look at it for that. I actually have Gemini not because I'm using the chatbot frequently, but because I got two terabytes of Google storage with it. And that alone was almost worth the $20 a month uh, since I run a business and could use all of that extra space. But if that's not something you need, then you don't really need to have Gemini. It just is good at some things, but overall not really a major improvement over ChatGPT. The other tool that I want to bring up is called Novel Crafter. Now, Novel Crafter is a little different in that it's not tied to any particular model of AI. Claude.ai is all about the Claude models. ChatGPT is all about OpenAI's GPT models. Gemini is all about Gemini's models, but Novel Crafter can actually pull in all of these models together using services like Open Router, but also through OpenAI's own API key and things like that. What Novel Crafter is really good at is tailoring the experience for fiction writers especially, but nonfiction writers can use it as well. And to give you a brief overview, this is what it looks like in here. You're able to put in information about your characters, about like how they look, how they sound, what they talk like, how they communicate. All of that information here can go in and just naturally feed the AI crucial information about those characters so that they sound unique and distinctive in their dialogue and things like that. And then you come over here and you write a scene beat, which is a brief description of what should happen next over the next couple hundred words. And then you go here to generate prose. My favorite, as I've mentioned already, is using the Claude 3 family of models, especially because the Claude family is really good at looking back at your other things that you've written because Novel Crafter pulls in some samples of your writing so it can get a sense of your style. It pulls in the last couple hundred words that you were working with and you can go ahead and use Opus here and it does a good job of matching your style. And when you add in all of the information about the characters and everything, it writes way better here than even if you were to use Claude in Claude.ai like I showed you earlier. So if I selected Claude Opus to have it write this next bit of the scene, it starts to spit out the scene right here. And now we have the scene, okay? So that's the way Novel Crafter works, and it's a fantastic tool, I believe, for those who are interested in writing fiction and for writing nonfiction. Uh, the process for nonfiction is a little different. But if you are interested in learning more about Novel Crafter, I have a video on Novel Crafter 101, which I will post right here. So you can check that out and get a good sense of how to set up everything in Novel Crafter, how to use it to your advantage. And I will see you in the next video.